G'day guys, Jason from the Outer Farm here. We're actually heading out the Outer Farm property now. I've got a bit of fencing I need to do, which requires me to take out my drop saw generator and a welder and a grinder. So that's a bit concerning because I'm going full electric across my property, but all will be revealed when we get out there. I've got the puppies loaded up, we'll head out. The story behind needing the welder and the grinder and the generator is that bit of section of fence there runs down and goes through a creek and any slight bit of rain, that goes underwater so it's going to be extremely hard to electrify it. What we had to do to overcome that was we had to have barbed wire through the creek so we decided to terminate here on the flat spot where it doesn't, where the floods don't come up and that's where we start our timeless electric fence that way and this way. So what I've got, I've got a space here. When they put this 115 mil post or well, I was at four and a half, four and three quarter inches in. They buried it into the ground about seven, eight hundred mil, and they build it out. And as you can see, they've got a pad here, and it jots out two hundred mil. And with these timeless posts, they go down, and they I've got an eight inch hole there, and probably, or oh, I'd say a foot below the surface, the concrete starts. So I haven't got enough room to drill a hole and put a post in, because they're going to use some bull rail on square posts pre-slotted out and slide them in and weld them on because I haven't got enough room or depth to put a post in I've had to come up with another idea hence why I've got the drop saw and the generator now what I'm going to do is measure this here and I'm going to have four bits of bull rail coming across there and I'm going to weld them directly onto the post I'm going to leave myself two inch gap here that way not going to jump out or short out off the fence. If you touch there, I'm a bit worried if the wires get too close and it touches that fence, and possibly short out. So we'll measure them up. This thunder's getting a butchy. He's actually petrified of the storm, so better hurry up because we've got to get up and try and cut this just in case it is a storm this afternoon and starts bucketing down rain. We'll head up and we'll cut these to suit. It's all right, mate. Storm's coming. You'll be right. Come on. I've got to cut the steel. Anyway, buddy. Get the way. No. Come on. Get the way. Get the way, mate. Okay, we're getting a shed if you're scared. Come on.
I've just realized it's going to be hard to weld these to the post because we've cut them off with a drop saw they're very square and I'll show you what I'm talking about it might be easy to bring the camera over actually this bit of PVC pipe here is very close to the diameter of those, that steel pipe out there I think it's about five mil or quarter of an inch small end diameter so that'll do for what we want to do what I mean by we've got a grinder if you have a look down the edge of that now on the sides there because it's sitting flush oh there's roughly about a an eighth of an inch or four mil gap on that side and the same on the other side that's going to be very hard to weld with a quarter of an inch gap so what I want to do is grab the I was going to use a four inch grinder but then that's going to be well and truly under so I've got a five inch grinder here and that diameter across this grinding disc is actually quarter of an inch oversize what I want to do is use this I want to grind where it's going to, that top bit where it's got to sit flush on the pipe I'm going to grind that end out so grind up and grind the end off and what that'll do is that'll give that shape then, that radius in here to marry up to the pipe and then we'll do the final fit up out on the job because that's going to be quarter of an inch wider I use a four inch grinder to take out that touch more so it marries on to the diameter of the pipe Carl just bought me a cup of tea. How lovely is that? Thanks, Dale. Just down there, be fine. There you go. Service with the. That's it, finished grinding those now. We'll have a look at the fit up. That's what we started with. So like I mentioned, it's about a three or four mil gap under there. And on the other side, all it's sitting on is that center piece. Cause that's cut square and there's no way in the world I can weld that, it's gonna be a big gap. As you can see, it's sitting on like a pinpoint edge, not gonna stand for itself, but if I now, on the other side I roll over, this is what I ground. That's one good sign, it's standing up for itself. You can have a look around the edge now. Sitting flush. All the way around, so that's going to be a lot easier without that gap. There's no way I can blow holes now through that as I'm welding it. But there's always two parts to the story. That's the good one. I'll show you the bad one. So it looks good from there. That side's perfect. That side's perfect on the back side. If you come around the other side, well, when I say bad, it's not bad. It'll weld up right there. Bit of a mouse hole. Well, I'm going to call it a drain hole purposely put in, but 
I was a bit heavy handed on the grinder and got a bit excited. But like I said, it's only about, oh, I wouldn't even be three mil, an eighth maximum. Bit of a grind mark in there, but that'll weld over. This is the finished product, obviously. I didn't have a video camera with me at the time and it looked like it was gonna rain. So rather than go home and get it and chance raining, I just welded it up, quickly cleaned it, let it cool and then put a coat of paint off and come back in the next morning and put another coat of paint around it. So it didn't end up working really well. It also doubles up as a good ladder as well. So I can access out there and I need to pull weeds. So at this point in time, I left this open too. I was gonna to put caps on it. But in the past, I've found I put caps on the end that either fills with water in there or you get ants in there and then you get dirt inside and then it rusts it out. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. I sort of made it on a couple of degrees tilt angle. So if it does get any water in there, it's self draining. Anyway guys, have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening, wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later.